Jeremy Lin to the point. Uh, so, Jeremy, I have to ask you the, the question that I think is on the minds of, of every New Yorker, uh, you know, in this city as this story has just gotten bigger and bigger, um, and that is who has the more comfortable couch, Landry Fields or your brother Josh? Definitely my brother. <laughs> um, Landry's, I was kind of sleeping in the fetal position. I didn't exactly <laughs> fit, uh, but... Uh, definitely my brother how much fun has this been for you I mean you go from from obscurity I mean we've heard the story now uh, for the last 13 days the yeah. last two weeks well, what's it been like for you and how much fun is it for you I think the biggest thing is how fun it's been because um, last year was uh, really tough and I think um, me talking about it doesn't do it justice but it was just really tough being on pins and needles the whole season not knowing if they're going to keep me if they're going to send me to D league what their plans were for the next year and um you know, I think I, I had so much pressure on myself and pressure from everybody else with the media that I had lost my passion for the game and I lost, you know, the joy of the game. And now it's all flooding back, mm. um, playing on this team, playing the way we're playing, winning games and uh, playing as a team. You won a state championship at Palo Alto High in California. Uh, you weren't recruited uh, out of high school. Um, you sent out tapes to yourself to a bunch of schools that really didn't respond to you. Um, at Harvard, you lead the Crimson to more success than they had had at that point in about a quarter century, been 25 years. Um, yet, you still didn't really garner a lot of attention. Undrafted, of course, as the story goes now. Um, you don't strike us as someone who's got a chip on your shoulder, but deep down, how much motivation did you draw from people overlooking you again at every step of the way, all these so called basketball experts? Obviously, I think it hurts. Um, I would say. I don't play to prove people wrong, but I would also say I remember every little thing that happens. Um, and so, you know, I just, uh, I know where I want to go with my career. I know what I, I have a vision for what I want to do with this platform. And that's what really drives me and motivates me. Um, but uh, obviously at times getting overlooked would be frustrating. Do you see yourself as, as the ultimate underdog? Um, I can't sit here and say I've done everything right and that's why I'm here. I really honestly can't say that. I've made a lot of mistakes, and, uh, and at the same time, I've had to improve a lot and work on a lot of different things, but I think God has used me and worked through me in a lot of different situations, even with my own fears, even with my own flaws, and um, he's used me in an underdog role, and, and now he, you know, and elevated me to being able to play in the NBA, and that's just... Uh, something where I need to give credit where credit is due. And I think, uh, you know, in this situation, the glory does go to God, and um, I can't say enough about that. Where did the faith come from? Uh, was it just uh, the upbringing with your parents in your house? And, and you mentioned before, you know, there were moments where you really doubted uh, the last couple of years that this would actually happen. How much did your faith kind of pull you through? Uh, definitely. I think uh, there was times when I thought of quitting, times when I thought of just hanging it up and uh, doing something else or taking a break from basketball altogether. Um, you know, the, we, I had a lot of ups and downs, but the downs were really down. And, uh, you know, it was my faith that was just the promises, God's promises of trusting in Him and His perfect plan and His sovereignty that really got me through the tough situations and my family supporting me. And um, now looking back, I can see a little bit of why everything happened the way it did, and uh, I'm thankful for that. I want to ask you about your father, uh, Ji Ming. He, he moved to the States from Taiwan in 1977, uh, and he said he wanted to do two things, get his Ph.D. in computer engineering and also to watch NBA basketball. Uh, you've talked about what a hoops junkie he was, uh, and he basically taught himself the game, as the story goes. What, what's, what's it been like to have the success and to have your father, of course, and your mom watching close by with all the hard work and, and the sacrifices that he made? Well, uh, I guess there's a little, a little bit of a misconception is that um, he didn't necessarily, like, try to teach us or drill us um, because he uh, never had, like, coaching himself. But the one thing that he always did was he would take us to play. And so we would always play, and then we ran into coaches that really developed us and taught us the fundamentals. And when we ended up uh, playing with my dad, um, we would play – every day and uh you know that's that's he he wasn't trying to necessarily teach us and make us into you know basketball stars he just wanted to spend time with his kids and have fun because we all love the game and i think um that's what i remember so much about my childhood is just spending time with my brothers and my dad and um, having those family moments where we're all just playing hoop 
What's his reaction been like uh, the he's, last couple of weeks? He's just super excited, and same with my mom, just because um, I think they see a different joy in me on the court that they didn't see last year. Obviously, a huge shout-out to all the fans. Thank you for the energy, as always. We love playing here. Um, obviously, as parents, when you see your kids happy, it makes you happy. And so, um, you know, I, I love them to death, and they love me. And so um, I'm just thankful that we're all able to go on this path and journey together and be, uh, be happy and, ex and experience this. When we return, the wider impact of Linsanity. Do you feel like you're a trailblazer? On Jeremy Lin to the point.